Our canaries must mean that we have to talk a little bit about Israel. Just for fun, I want to show you what democracy looks like. Show me what democracy looks like. Yeah, yeah this is what democracy looks like. Isn't it fun? Now it's all fixed. The Arab world clearly loves the U.S. It's great to see the obvious affection they have for Hillary Clinton as they chant the name of the woman her husband had an affair with, Monica, Monica, and then pelt her with uh, eggs and fruits and vegetables. Obviously, they want a reminder that Bill chose, you know, Hillary, not Monica. I'm sure that's what it is. So sweet of the Egyptian people. And then to throw fresh vegetables at her, uh, I mean, it's, 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 it's honestly, it, to show that they're concerned about her health. I think how many people offer, you know, world leaders delicious produce when they come to town? Well, the Egyptians do. U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton was taunted by chants of Monica and tomato-throwing demonstrators as she visited the Egyptian port city of Alexandria on Sunday. Tomatoes, shoes, water bottles thrown at her as part of Clinton's motorcade pulled up, protected by riot police. Although a U.S. official did point out that her vehicle wasn't hit, so maybe he was trying to get the other vehicle. Also during the day, before Hillary's motorcade pulled up, a protester burned the American flag, the Israeli flag, and then held up signs that read, USA, USA, ugly, stupid animal. <laughs> That's so, USA, ugly, stupid ass animal. Hey. <laughs> oh, man. How's that Arab Spring working out for us, huh? It's beautiful, isn't it? It's so beautiful that I suggest we keep our money flowing right directly to Egypt. I mean, we're only giving them $1.3 billion in aid right now. We should double or triple that because it's great stuff. I mean, obviously, that's a great investment for us. Still more from the Middle East. It seems that if you're not setting yourself on fire nowadays, you're not really in with the cool kids. A protester in Israel lit himself on fire to protest the high cost of living there. Well, can I tell you something? This guy's smart. I mean, there is nothing that is going to bring down the high cost of milk faster than setting yourself on fire. Really. I mean, can I ask you something? Is it really that bad in Israel? I mean, compared to Syria, and Libya, Lebanon, you know, anywhere else in the region. Tell you what, why don't we look at that? Let's look at the differences and how bad things are in Israel. It's horrible. Life expectancy in Israel is among the highest in the world, 82 years. That's higher, by the way, than socialist uh, Sweden and socialist France. They have a literacy rate of 97%. Infant mortality rate is the lowest in the world at 4.1 deaths per thousand live births. And 71, 71 have a computer at their home, 71 out of 100. On the average, an Israeli family has 2.1 cell phones. Now, let's compare some of those stats to Egypt and the Sudan, shall we? The wonderful Arab Spring, life expectancy is 71. But they're setting themselves on fire because it costs a lot of money. Literacy rate is 66%. Israel, it's 97. 61 in the Sudan, 58 years in the Sudan. The infant mortality rate, 25.2 deaths per live 1,000 births. Let's see, 4.1 deaths, 25 deaths, 68 in the Sudan. And if you, you know, want to light yourself on fire and bring down Israel, I mean, I mean, first of all, that's so passe now. I mean, that's so 2010, been there, done that. But, I mean, I guess you could, because this country really looks like it sucks compared to the rest. One more thing. Do you remember when Israel bulldozed some houses and the media said, how horrible this is? The president gave his speech, this is horrible. The Palestinians, what are they doing? Yeah, 
You know this? They're burning down or, or bulldozing houses, and the media ignores it. Here's the story. Hamas police forces on Sunday brought in bulldozers to begin demolishing houses belonging to Palestinians in the Gaza Strip, forcibly evicting the families authorities said were squatting on government land. Women and children watched in disbelief as the bulldozers crumpled their cinder block homes. Have you heard this story? Where, where are all the pretty pictures of this one? Where's the president? The air thick with clouds of dust. I'm sorry. Where's the UN condemning this horrific human rights violation? Look, here's the thing. You keep moving on. You just know the truth. We've already won. Last Saturday night, this weekend, I spoke at an event to raise money for a great hospital in uh, Israel um, called the Asaf. Harafa, how do you say this, Tiffany? Yeah, Harafa Medical Center. Thank you, Tiffany. Um, I raised money for this. this. This is an incredible hospital. They need money to convert their underground parking garage into a 400-bed emergency facility. They need it underground for a reason. It's now near Tel Aviv, and it provides medical and surgical care for a population of 450,000 people, Jews and Muslims and Christians. There weren't a lot of people there writing checks. I need you to help. I'm going to go help them again, I think, in Houston this fall. What I realized, however, is this. It doesn't matter what your friends or neighbors do. It doesn't matter what happens. It, 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 it doesn't matter if the government has rejected Israel entirely. It doesn't matter if the world has. That's the collective. I don't stand with the collective. I stand as an individual. Judge me on the content of my character, because I know God will. Even if this earth doesn't, God will. As long as I didn't vote for the people that are dismissing Israel, I've done my job. We're fine. It's what the individual does that matters, not the collective. And I don't have to pray to a bridge or a road to thank them for the decisions. I made the decisions. I make a difference. You do too. Stand up for the right thing. Stand up for individual choice. Here's the good news. You are good. You are on the right side. Stay committed. Stay active. Live it every day. We are creating. We're transforming into a new America that is much, much more powerful at your home, not the home of the president.